I think with physical versus digital, they have completely unique characteristics about them and utilities. People are just getting more and more used to uh, the idea of the owning the digital fashion, digital assets. It's actually also fueled by building um, brands and quality and experience and creating really high value and, and, and very importantly, scarcity. Without further ado, I'm going to kick off with uh, a question about the dematerialization of clothing. And I'm going to ask Santiago, um, how do you think th th this trend come about and became part of the fashion industry? I think it's been around for a long time. I just think that it's been a different, it's been looked at differently. So if we've looked at gaming, uh, digital clothing and games, it's been around for decades now, and it has been producing money for a substantial amount of time now. So now with companies like Fortnite and Roblox now integrating the fashion world into their strategies, now I feel like the fashion world is now looking at this and saying, you know, this is probably what's what it's going to be. You know, this is actually going to be something that is sustainable. And I think that to this point, it had to be the NFT introduction to the element you know, to this whole mix to really take this to a commercial level because now it allows for the real ownership of these assets. So all of these assets before that you were buying in these video games were in closed environments and they didn't have ownership. If Fortnite closed down tomorrow, all of these assets would be lost. So now with this introduction of NFTs, these people actually have real ownership over the digital assets. So I think that's what's going to be kind of the next step to pushing this to, you know, wide, wide scale consumers. Well, if I ever get Balenciaga swag in Fortnite, I definitely don't want it to be lost. So exactly. <laughs> right there with you. Um, all right, then uh, a question for Troy. What uh, challenges do you see in driving the adoption of those dematerialized products as well as boosting their growth? So the problem, I mean, people are just getting more and more used to uh, the idea of the owning the digital fashion, digital assets. And uh, I think the problem is just getting people to accept that that's been that's going to be on the trend and move forward. Uh, I think it hasn't had that much trouble in the initial people that are early adopters right now, but the lighter adopters, we're going to see how they patch on. But earlier, like uh, Santi was talking about, like there's also like early, this has been around for a while, like Second Life has been around forever. And I know personally people that made careers designing clothes within Second Life. And I think the NFT opportunities as they grow out should be really interesting to watch. But the, it's very. I'm going to be very curious to see how the later adopters uh, value digital assets and digital clothing. Uh, but it's nothing new within the space. It's just about actually the application of NFTs and how people accept them. Uh, so it's curious to see how the later adopters feel about that. <laughs> you just made me feel a bit embarrassed that my interest in digital fashion didn't start with Second Life and I kind of got there late. <laughs> um... I mean, I admit mine started with RuneScape, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then uh, a question for Carol. Uh, from the perspective um, of a physical retailer, um, what are the key implications of this technology that you think will still support physical shopping? Yeah, I think it's so interesting and like, it, it is, it's so great to think about um, all of these points about how has this sort of technology and the use case being um, tested within different areas like gaming, within within Second, uh, second Life, etc. And for us, I think within from a luxury lens, what's been really interesting is using these kind of, uh, as tests um, in terms of how people are actually um, using and interacting and, and there's obviously been really um, interesting moments there when you see the commercialization of uh, the Gucci NFTs etc and the Burby NFTs but I think I think what's been interesting for us within a sector if you take it back a couple of years is actually um, as we say this is this is nothing new but what's actually really kind of changed and, and, and switched thinking I think within the sector is the um, emergence of just the, 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 the maturity of technology around for example 
3D assets. And that really allowed us to be able to create really beautiful luxury level assets um, of, of products and then start to play with them within a very much a web two type of use case. So actually looking at um, really, um, as we talk about sort of the utility of 3D assets around sort of the web two actually current commerce use case within luxury, uh, we started to evolve things like virtual try on, we were able to use 3D assets within the PDP, etc. use 3D viewers for people to interact with 3D assets um, and actually even get to the point of having some digital worlds within a, a Web2 um, uh, environment. So um, just uh, you know, in the same way that, that, the, um, that we've talked about, that people have started to really interact with 3D assets and actually find them very useful, enjoy the experience of interacting with them, etc. And then we start to see the kind of the dipping the toes of actually um, having them outside of an e-commerce experience, whether that be uh, within a sort of closed environment within sort of Roblox or whether it's about um, starting to sell NFTs on um, platforms like Artifact or the dematerialized, etc. And so I think I think within the, the the luxury industry, that's that's the, the the key aspect that we're starting to evolve. What is the use case for this technology within the luxury pillar, not mm -hmm. for luxury just to become kind of a supplier of assets to the gaming industry, for example, which is a really exciting channel. But we actually have our, potentially our own path and our own story to tell within this um, technology as well. So I think within um, uh, those the physical aspect of luxury, that's that's what we've been building and shaping and thinking about. What what does this mean? And then there's obviously the, the practical aspect of uh, from an infrastructure perspective. How do we start to be able to create NFTs and host NFTs and, and sell and trade and um, provide people opportunities to um find out more about the, 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 the nft that they have etc and, and around that kind of um, application and experience um, layer but then also um uh, just as santi's talking about things like the the standards and the protocols to be able to really truly allow for this idea that we really want to build towards which is like you know take your take your digital asset around and and, and interact with it in different ways and um, in different environments as well and then just the very exciting aspect of uh, we can see the kind of very um Linear, linear connection between just a, a physical item and a, a digital item in the NFT, but actually we know that NFTs can and hold value, but also can unlock value, and they can hold lots of different value about an item, lots of different types of very rich metadata around an item that we um, you're not able to kind of carry around with your physical items, so the authenticity piece, uh, maybe um, items around um, how it's been uh, made, who's also owned it, etc. And then start to look at kind of away from the kind of first layer of uh, of use cases into second and third layer of use cases where we're not just limited to thinking about these things as almost like a subset of a physical item, but actually as an asset themselves to unlock experience and, and, and value in lots of new ways as well. So lots lots of essentially testing and learning and thinking about how how to how to build this path. I think the learning never ends in the web free and the metaverse. So I, I fully agree. Um, all right. So let's take a uh, let's take a step back from physical and take a plunge into digital. Um, so I have a question for Justin about uh, digital scarcity um, in both music and fashion sectors have been using scarcity to drive exclusivity. Um, what benefits and utility do you think music NFTs share with fashion in your experience? So I think one, um, we're, we always value exclusivity because we want the fans to feel like they're getting a special experience. And I think back, you know, a while back when things were physical, you know, you would go to Target and there would be a bonus track on the CD in there and whatnot. And now in the world of Spotify and Apple Music, there's not really that chance to give people that exclusive access to something. And, you know, if we're releasing a music NFT, it's a place for somebody to go and own something that is strictly theirs that's not so widely available that has something that's exclusive for them um, and then also when it comes to artist merch whether it's just you know a regular drop or whether it's around an album release you know we always want people to feel like they have something that not a lot of other people have and you know if you're not able to make it to the pop-up in new york around the concert or the pop-up in la around the album release or whatever this kind of opens it up to you know whoever wants to dive in and try and be the first one online to go grab this 
And um, I think I forgot who it was, but somebody made a really good point about like, oh, if Fortnite goes down, like all of your Balenciaga merch is gone. And I think, you know, in the world of Spotify and Apple Music and whatnot, like you own it, you pay for it and you have your music. But at the end of the day, if Spotify goes down, my whole music collection is gone. And so it feels like this is a chance for people to have their, you know, virtual stack of CDs or DVDs or whatever that, you know, they can hold on to. Uh, which I think is really important. Mm -hmm. It kind of connects uh, to an earlier point that Carol made about the digital value. So, uh, Carol, um, how does digital scarcity enable a retention of value in digital fashion assets? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's important, you know, to remember um, that the luxury goods in in industry is a three hundred and fifty billion pound industry, and it's it's obviously based on selling physical goods, but it's actually also fueled by building um, brands and quality and experience and creating really high value and, and, and very importantly, scarcity. So for fashion lovers, scarcity is a really important part of the experience. And they often talk about sort of the hunt for the perfect sneaker or the perfect dress or looking for a really standout item in a particular collection from a particular year with a particular creative director, for example. So um, I think what's really exciting is you can see um, some of these like real pillars and, and principles of luxury and how they can just so um, closely align with digital um, scarcity as well. So um, taking all of those lessons learned from, from luxury and building that into whatever the, the you know, the digital scarcity um, idea is around NFTs and that can uh, that can be around just sort of visual and creative um, scarcity, but also potentially scarcity that can be unlocked through um, through just the, the uh, unlocking the value within an NFT, maybe um, unlocking a, a scarce experience, for example, or a scarce kind of version or um, manipulation of your or your NFT, etc. It's just um, it's it's definitely something you can see will translate really well into into this into mm -hmm. digital.